What's going on YouTube? We're back with another video. It's been a minute since I uploaded and I mean trying to find the time honestly as you maybe you know what I'm saying you may be able to hear but you know what I mean just trying to find the time. But um this cut we kicking it off with the with the um Oster Topaz and right here all I'm doing is um debulking it. I don't know if you've seen it in the beginning. I did a slight before and after of it um, on the left side. And this right here, um, this is me just debulking everything before I go in. I know sometimes it may be complicated to like just create a canvas for yourself. But instead of having to, to just, you know, stress about it, you just debulk everything with a certain guard or whatever you feel comfortable with using first. And then you go straight into the cut. Here, um, after debulking everything, I've already went into my um, blade only lever open to close method. And with my technique, as the um, the time has progressed, I know it's been a minute since I dropped the video, but now my technique is really like debulking and then lever play, just open to close with my blade, the most of the haircut. But I tried to like slow down a little bit so it could be a little more evident in this video. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm just getting that taper together because I don't really want to have to use my god, my gauge too much, just because I enjoy the way the taper looks whenever it looks like it's fit for the person, more so than just a like a factory taper, you know. So here I'm also going in on it, debulking the size with my comb. Uh, this method here is a lot simpler because. It takes off just enough, not really too much. And you still have a, a decent taper to go with. Now the bottom guy, I'm going in with my zero here. Just um, using it in between halfway open to begin with to all the way open to all the way close. This is going to allow me to keep my transition in place since I already debulked it. And then on top of that, I still went in and was able to... Um, create my transition from skin to the lightest part of my taper. And I was just making sure that lever play is on point and giving myself uh, more so of my own type of shape to it. I kind of wanted it to burst and just, you know, blow out from um, near the ear and then burst all the way through to the edge up. And I still wanted to keep the edge up pretty dark. And I usually just leave the bottom there, you know, like after I separate the taper because it just gives me um, my reference of where to clean up to when I go in for my, uh, like my skin, my actual skin taper transition with the trimmers. So here I'm using the corner of my blade. I kind of look at it as like a calligraphy pen, you know, like if you write with it a certain way, you could write thinner and then you could write thicker in certain areas as well. So just um, holding it in different uh, at different angles, allowing myself to cut it different types of ways in certain areas, depending on how how bulky it is or um, how tight of a space I'm trying to flick at specifically. And then when I did transition and went in with my walls, um, these are adjusted. So therefore, I do get a closer cut with them than I, I do with my osters because they are they aren't adjustable. So um, I can I can't do anything but just cut with them the not like the lowest way they cut. But right here I get a little closer, you know what I'm saying? So now we're finna break into the edge up. This is the the most intriguing part I say of the cut. Uh, it's a lot of bulk and new growth. Um, so here I'm just going through and consultating a little more. You know what I'm saying? You can never consultate too much. Just trying to see how low we're gonna knock it down before we actually go in for the finishing on up. So here I'm freehanding it first because it was so long. He hadn't gotten a cut in months. And since it was at the length that it's at, I was just like, you know what? Let me just freehand it a little bit to where it's low enough and I could comb through it and just go in with um, the one guard on there just so I could actually lay it down to a certain level. And I'm just making sure I check out the way that it's growing. Of course, um, it isn't all growing in the same direction, but at the same time, I'm still going to make sure that I'm cutting it in the direction that it's growing. 
and right here raking at it just so I could lower it still just because I want it to be as low as possible that um, so that whenever I do go in for my edge up everything is already laid and it makes a, a sharper edge up because you know sometimes you know you leave a little bit too much hair on there then they make it curl back up so I was just making sure everything was laid especially since he hasn't had a haircut in a while I'm just trying to make sure it's on point so that he can have an edge up that'll last him a, a nice while. So now with the one on there, just making sure I, I knock it down to that length that I wanted at. And like I said earlier, these don't cut at a super low length. So um, that's a plus because therefore it allows me to, to keep the edge ups darker. That's why I think I'm, I'm, I mean, it's 2024, 2024, sheesh, it's 2024, so I mean, you know what I'm saying, sometimes you just, you got to switch it up a little bit, and for me personally, my biggest, um, my biggest goal right now is to use only corded clippers, so I mean, I'm not, I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm going to get there eventually, you know what I'm saying, I can just keep these on the charger, but I don't know. I think I just actually wanted a quarter pair of clippers. Um, so for this edge up, as you can see, that thing looking super sharp. Already prepped. Then, you know what I mean, just cleaned up a little bit. This is just me touching it up before I go in and actually trying to make it as symmetrical as possible. Just tapping and going, tapping and going. And still, you want to make sure that you get some type of shape on it because, of course, it is an edge up and it um, it can grow in different directions and all that type of st that good stuff. But you got to make sure you're putting it where it's supposed to be to where it looks straight, even if somebody's head doesn't, you know what I mean, match specifically. Not saying that's the case here, but um, just with any haircut, you know, every everything is different. Now that I got most of the edge up already prepped and put together for this um, shave, I didn't go in on the vertical bars. Now, I mean, before, try to get on me about not going in the vertical bars on the comments, you know what I'm saying? Just, just realize it'll be way sharper if you just let those vertical bars be natural, especially if you're doing a high taper. Let those vertical bars be natural and then just clean them up with the shave. You ain't even got to go in all the way. You just clean them up with the shave and then that's going to make them, you know what I'm saying? They're going to pop at that point. They will definitely be popping. Now just bringing everything together. The taper I already put in place is looking smooth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fresh feeling. <laughs> fresh feeling. <laughs> so still, after you go in with the razor, you want to still follow it up with your with your trimmers. You know, you want to make sure it's it's a hundred percent, hundred and seventy five percent. That's clean. And I'm really nitpicky when it comes to my edge ups. I could I could probably finish like the taper in 20 minutes or whatever, but when it comes to the edge up, sometimes it just depends, you know what I mean? If it's been a minute, it might take me a little longer. So now that we got the profile put together, now it's time to clean up the nape. So I'm still doing the same thing like I did with the um, with the edge up. I'm just debulking it first as low as I need it to be before I actually go in and put the um, the attachment on there, the one the one comb on there. The one comb is gonna help me get that does that one desired length so that whenever I go in with my my um, my taper portion of it then I know where I need to stop at. I know I don't have to go no higher than this specific, you know what I mean? And that was me just tapering everything. It, we was doing the low taper in the back, a high taper on the sides, or like a mid high on the sides. So then we weren't gonna like go into it too much. He still wanted to keep some of that bulk so it can grow out and he can um, 
extra and the rest of it. Here I'm going in. Um, this is the way I've been saying I do my tapers now. Just creating my base guides after I have one pair of clippers that's adjusted and I have one pair that isn't. So these are zero gap and the, um, the osters aren't. So that makes it kind of like a shadow taper look. This kind of brings that skin transition to life for my haircuts. That's why I go in with the um, with the walls afterwards. But I mean, here it's just sped up a little bit. It's just me um, doing my freestyles, my freestyle tapers, so that I don't have to go through all the all the fade systems of the haircut. I mean, it wasn't really that long. This haircut was probably 45 minutes long altogether. Especially after it being his first time in months that he got a haircut. Uh, I'd say that wasn't bad. This is some slight what I did on the back edge up. This is uh, before I had time to actually adjust my trimmers again. And I knew where they hit at and I knew where they didn't hit at. So I, I knew in the back I was just going to wait and just use a different pair. These work every now and then, you know what I mean? Sometimes on the charger, they don't... Sometimes you just have to have them plugged into the charger or else they won't they won't even cut on. And of course the finish and product. If you can leave a comment, let me know what you think about the cut. Like, share, subscribe, and also follow me on my other platforms. And until next time, she shared the barber.